Hello and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 55 of my podcast. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Uh, welcome to any new viewers, and a big welcome back to any returning viewers. Today is a really nice cloudy, foggy, and gray Friday here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. It is April still, um, and we do have a Ravelry group for this podcast, which you should totally go check out and join if you haven't yet. It is where you'll find the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's where you'll find knit-along stuff and giveaway stuff and all kinds of other fun stuff, so go check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, we do have a knit-along running right now. And that is the kid along, uh, K I D along. So anything that you can make for a little one, a kid, a baby, anyone who isn't an adult is welcome. Um, there are a, a really small number of rules, which you can find in the thread in the group on Ravelry. There's an FO thread and a chatter thread. And um, you guys are making some amazing things. I am loving, loving, loving it. And uh, there are some really awesome prizes for this knit along so far. And uh, I feel like, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've entered more FOs into this knit along than I have any of my other knit alongs. I've made so much stuff for this knit along and so have you guys. I love seeing what you're making. Um, so go check that out if you happen to be knitting something for a little one. This might be the knit along for you. I do have a new prize that came in in the mail. It was a very generous donation from Mad Fuzzy Yarns. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Um, one of these skeins I'm going to add to the prize pool for this knit along, and the other one I'm keeping. So <laughs> these are a couple of skeins of yarn that was sent to the podcast as a donation from Mad Fuzzy Yarns, um, whose proprietress is Marta in Maine. And this yarn is pretty freaking cool. Um, Marta is in Maine. And this wool from the fleece to the hand-dyed skein is completely made in Maine. And it's um, a wool breed called East Frisian. So that is really, really awesome. Um, she gets the East Frisian wool, has it spun, and hand dyes it herself, all in Maine. Um, and the base that she sent us was the is the pretty tough base. It's 80% East Frisian wool and 20% star, fire star nylon. So there is a little bit of sparkle in these skeins. And uh, this colorway is Glacier Lake. And this is going to be uh, a prize for the kid along. It's so, so gorgeous. It is a sock yarn, it's fingering weight. And um, it is a nice, locally rustic wool and it feels fantastic. I love it. Um, so there's her label. I will link to her shop in the show notes, so definitely check her out. She has a really, really cool company. I love what she's doing. Um, and then the one I'm keeping for myself is a sock set. This is the fallback sock set. And the main color, you get 70 grams, and the contrast color, you get 30 grams. So this is really, really gorgeous. It's the same base, so it's got that, it's a rustic wool with a little bit of sparkle, which I think is super, super cool. So thank you so much, Marta, for the donation. Again, check out her shop, Mad Fuzzy, raised, milled, and hand-dyed in Maine. Super, super cool. So if you would like to win this skein of yarn, go check out the kit along, make an entry, and you can win it, along with some other really fabulous prizes. So that is our knit along currently. And I will have one more announcement-y thing before getting into the knitting. Um, I had test knit some leg warmers for a friend of mine, Caitlin, um, these past few weeks, I showed them off as an FO last week. I love them and the pattern was just released. So I wanted to tell you guys about it in case you were interested in casting a pair on 
which I highly, highly recommend you do. They're awesome leg warmers. Um, and I really love mine a lot. So the pattern is the Bend Leg Warmers and that's by Caitlin Grace. I am going to link to the pattern in the show notes and go check it out because it's an awesome, awesome pattern. I loved knitting it and I love wearing them. They're great. It's a fingering weight um, leg warmer pattern. So check that out. That is available. Okay, that's it. On to what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Even Flow cardigan, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. I knit it out of socks that rock medium weight in the bittersweet colorway, which is a sport weight yarn. And this is hands down my very favorite thing I've ever knit. It's the best garment I have ever made. Uh, it fits me so well. A lot of the garments that I've made fit me really great. But this one's just perfect. Um, it fits well and stylistically it's like my perfect, perfect cardigan. It's long, it's A-line, it has set in sleeves which fit me the best in cardigans. Um, it's got a really, really wide neckband which I really like. It's an open cardigan so there's no closures. And I like wearing cardigans open so it's perfect. Um, I love it. I love it so much. I talk more about it in uh, the episode where it is an FO, which I will link to in the show notes if you're interested to see more about it, to see more about it, to see more of it. <laughs> There's also um, some information in my project page on Ravelry for this thing. I love it. It's seriously my favorite thing ever. I almost wear it all the time. So that's what I'm wearing. And let's get on to what I've been working on. I have like three finished objects. That's pretty awesome. They're all little. <laughs> They're all for the kid along. They're all little tiny things. Um, and yeah, I've been going kind of crazy with the little tiny things, which is fun. My first finished object is a hat. This is the Aki, 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 A-K-I bonnet by Boris and Stasha Designs, the designers Allison McCarney, and I knit this out of Moonstone Diorks in the Polworth DK base in the Frostbite colorway. And this is just a little baby bonnet. It is super cute. It's got these little things. What is it? A little cord down here with these teeny tiny tassels. They're like super teeny tiny tassels. <laughs> And um, it came out really cute. It was a really quick little mitt. Um, these are actually drawstrings, so you can, I don't know, it's attached there, so you can drawstring it. <laughs> but it's a baby hat, and it's done, and it's super cute, and I love it. It's a DK weight pattern, and I had a lot of fun knitting this. It's like a, it's kind of a rib stitch, and you seam it up the back. And, um, yeah, I like it. It's the first hat that I've made for my kid who is due to be born in July. And uh, I really want to make more hats. I feel like hats are easy and fun and where? I don't know. I don't know. People tell me you should put your kid in hats, so I figure I should have some hats. <laughs> so I really want to make more hats. This is the leftover yarn from my Something Wicked Mitts. Um, which was another recent FO, and I still have like a ton of yarn left over. So those are my leftovers, and we'll see what this gets turned into next. I love it when one skinny yarn can be turned into like a million different projects. So that's gonna be cool to see what else it turns into. And I think this is a great pattern that you should knit if you're looking for a baby hat. Super cute. I do want, this is like a bonnet style hat. I do want to knit like a, like a beanie style hat next, I think. So we'll see what I come up with for that. So, Aki by Boris and Stasha in Moonstone Diorks. I like it. Next thing I finished is another baby knit. And this is the what is this thing called? The Flax Light. This is a Tin Can Knits little sweater pattern. And it is 
a fingering weight sweater. It's um, just a top-down raglan stockinette pullover with some garter detail on the sleeve. It's just a garter panel that runs all the way down the sleeve. And uh, this is done. So that's cool. The yarn that I used is, again, Moonstone Dye Works in the BFL sock base. And it's the Stone Cold Manners colorway, which is um, one of my favorite colorways. It's my A Court of Thorns and Roses inspired colorway. And I think it's cool. I like it. Um, the pattern was really easy to follow, really fun to knit. Um, it's super, super basic. It's just a top-down raglan. And I knit this in the second to smallest size again. I think I mentioned that about the hat. The hat I knit in the second to smallest size, so it wasn't the newborn size, but the next one up. Same thing here. Um, it's like the three to six month size or something like that. So this is another entry into the kit along, and it is super cute. I knit this on a size, I think it was, I'm not gonna say what size needle I knit it on because I forgot, but if you look in the uh, project page for this project on my Ravelry, um, I know what needle size I used, and I did just use the needle size called for in the pattern. Um, I am a huge proponent of swatching for garments. Garments are the only things I really ever swatch for, and I do it religiously, except for baby sweaters. And I only just started knitting baby sweaters since I got pregnant, um, but I, I definitely decided I am not swatching for baby sweaters. It doesn't matter to me <laughs> um, how close the gauge is to the patterns gauge because um, it's a baby and I don't really care if it doesn't fit that well and if it doesn't fit that well they'll either grow into or out of it soon anyway so but yeah I um, have not swatched for any of my baby garments and I will not in the future um, but I do uh, strongly believe in swatching for adult garment patterns. So anyway, this is the second to small size. It came out as, I don't know. I don't know if it came out the size it was supposed to, probably. I'm not gonna measure either. Um, and I all I honestly don't really know baby sizes that well because I've never, I don't have that much experience with babies. So we'll see when this fits my kid. I have no idea. It'll probably fit it pretty soon. It'll just be big. Um, so yeah, this was super fun in it. It's really pretty quick, a fingering weight little raglan sweater. I'm happy it's ready to go. And this is my leftover yarn. So I used a pretty good amount of the skein. I just have this little bit left. I don't know, this is maybe 20 grams or so. So again, this is the Stone Cold Manners colorway on the BFL sock base. And um, I really like it. My last finished object is something I can't remember if I've shown you guys before. I started this little guy like a million years ago and then I put it down because I got bored with it. And then I just picked it up last weekend and finished it in like few, a few hours. So here he is. This is uh, the Octopus Pattern by Susan B. Anderson, and I freaking love him. Um, I mentioned this last week, I don't often knit toys, but I do really, really love hand-knit toys. And um, this one was pretty easy to put together. The legs are a teeny bit fiddly, uh, but I started this octopus last year sometime and I got maybe about, it's top down, and I got maybe about here and put it down. And it had been sitting just in a project bag in the corner of my office forever. And I don't know why I picked him up again, but I did. And I'm really happy because he's super cute. So the yarn that I used is some hand spun. Um, and here's my leftover. And this is a two-ply, It's I want to say it's like a worsted weight. Um, and I spun this on my ladybug spinning wheel probably two or three years ago out of some Anzula fiber that I picked up at Stitches West quite a long time ago. Probably 2014 is my guess. I don't really know. 
Um, but it's, I remember it's an organic merino. I don't remember the colorway name, but uh, it's a really, really beautiful fiber. And the yarn came out really, really nice. And I remember when I spun this, I tried really intentionally to spin it thicker. Um, Cause I think my kind of default spinning ends up being like a sport weight. Um, and I really wanted something thicker. So this is about, it's probably like a light worsted. And uh, it's really nice, I have a lot left over. And so let's talk about this little octopus guy. <laughs> this is a Susan B. Anderson pattern, who is like a queen of toy knit patterns. And it's just called octopus. And it's a top down little octopus. Super easy to make, super, super easy to make. I use double pointed needles a size five, I think. Um, what are they called? Carbons. Uh, now, I don't typically like carbon needles, carbons needles, unless it's the double points. I don't know why. I love the carbons double points, and I feel like they're a lot different than the circular ones. I don't particularly like circular carbons, but I love the double points. And I don't particularly love double pointed needles, but there are some instances where I do really like using them. Most of the time when I do knit toys, which hasn't been that often, um, but whenever I have, I like using double points uh, the best. So I do have a couple of sets of Carbon's double points and that's what I used here and I loved working with them. Um, so he has got these eyes that I have embroidered on and those are embroidered out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the cast iron colorway. So he's got some pretty fancy eyes. <laughs> the pattern calls for you to use safety eyes, but I don't, I didn't want to use safety eyes. Uh, I remember back when I first cast this guy on, I went to go buy some safety eyes off of the internet and I just decided I didn't want to. I don't know. Sometimes I get this bug about like buying things that are new that are kind of unnecessary like safety eyes like I don't know it for one like you could buy like a small amount for an amount of money or like a much bigger amount for much for an amount of money that isn't that much more so I was like about to order like a hundred pairs of safety eyes and I was just like what am I doing <laughs> I'm not gonna do this I do not need a hundred pairs of safety eyes um, hanging around in my life forever. So I decided, and so I didn't do it. And maybe that's what stopped me from finishing this thing is that I decided not to buy the eye. So I just like let it go. But I just decided to embroider on some eyes. And it's not even like proper embroidery. It's just, I just kind of went like this with this sewing needle over and over again. And those are his eyes and I think they're super cute. The legs. The legs were a pain in the butt. I did not enjoy it. So the legs are all eye cords. And the way they are attached is a little, it's, it's, it's easy. It's like super easy, but, um, I kept getting kind of confused from the pattern. So I went in the project page, like I normally do to see what other people did and said about the legs. And a few people had some things to say about the leg attachment. And one person I remember made it super clear about how the positioning of the thing is supposed to go while you're doing it. And whatever she said made it click for me. And I still don't think I really did it right. I think I kind of just half made it up. But um, if you can tell, all the legs are positioned like a little bit differently. They're kind of supposed to all look the same, but mine are all wonky. Um, and that's just because I kind of didn't really know what I was doing. And I was kind of just like doing each one a little bit different because I couldn't really remember. <laughs> but I mean, that does not matter. It's totally, it looks really good, I feel like. And he is super cute and I love him. And uh, I think he's probably going to live in my baby's nursery. So I made a toy for my kid, I'm so happy. And yeah, I again recommend this pattern because he's adorable. I recommend him for hand spun because I think that really makes him super cute and kind of janky and kind of wonky. And I love that. <laughs> and um, yeah. So again, 
I have got all this left over. We'll see what I do with it. I have got this dream of taking all these like random leftover bits of yarn that I have and making a whole bunch of birds of happiness. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I want to, I think that would be really cool. I've made one bird of happiness in my whole life and it is right there. You can kind of see the belly of it. Um, and I made that out of some leftover Miss Babs Yowza in the, I don't remember the colorway, but it's a pink one. <laughs> um, and I loved it. I love that little freaking bird so much. I think it's the coolest thing ever. I just, you know, I don't know. We'll see if I make more. They're, they're, they're just not, I don't know. I just am not motivated to make tiny little cute things like that, I guess. But I want to. I really want to make, like, especially have hand spun and stuff like that. I want to make a whole bunch of birds of happinesses and kind of just hang them all over the place. And now that I'm going to have a kid, I feel like that would be super cute to have a bunch of little birds hanging in the nursery. I'm going to do it. I'm totally going to do it. And by the way, I stuffed the octopus with some um, wool fiber that I had lying around. I have a bunch of random cleaned and prepped fleeces. Not a bunch. I have like two um, that are kind of mixtures of unknown wools and alpacas and stuff like that. So um, I don't really like spinning with it. I've tried, I got it processed so that I could spin with it and I don't love it. So I have like a ton of it that um, I just kind of stole some from and stuffed him with. <laughs> so that is awesome. I'm really pretty proud of myself for finishing up that ancient UFO. And now I have a cute little octopus. I was kind of hoping that would get my toy mojo into gear because I, like I said, I kind of want to knit some little toy -y things. But, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. That is it for my FOs. I, pretty proud of myself, of three finished objects for these past two weeks. And they're all like, I don't know, cool little productive things for like my kid. Cheers to me. I am drinking out of this super cool mug that I got from Daiso, which is the Japanese dollar store. And uh, I don't have one locally, but there's one in the Bay Area that I picked this up from. And this is a bunch of little animal faces, and they're labeled with their English names and their Japanese names. That's super cute. Okay, on to works in progress. The first thing that I've been working on uh, these past couple of weeks is living in my Sugar Tots Fox Project Bag. And they are my nomadic yarns, knee high socks. I finished the first one. So here is my hoe. This is a knee length sock made out of nomadic yarns in the Dobby is a Free Elf colorway. And I am pretty obsessed with making knee-high socks lately. This is my third pair of the year. I have not made a regular pair of socks at all this year. I started to wonder if this was going to become the year of the knee-high socks and if I was just going to make all knee-high socks this year. But I think my next planned sock cast on is a regular size sock. But I don't know. Who knows? I could change my mind and do knee-high socks again. Um, but I am loving them. The way I do my knee-high socks is I cast on 64 stitches for the cuff. I do a pretty long two by two rib. And then right about here, I slowly decrease. Um, I do d decrease rounds about every 10 rounds or so um, until I get to 56 stitches, which is my standard sock count. Go all the way down to the heel, heel flap and gusset is my standard and my fave heel. And then my favorite toe, which is a sort of version of a rounded toe with a Kitchener finish at the end. And it fits fantastically and these colors are amazing and they're my favorite and I love nomadic yarns with a passion. And um, I love it. I love this huge, huge knee-high sock. Um, the other one is really good and started. Um, I'm almost down to the end of the leg. I have a little bit more to go before I do the heel. And this is how much yarn I have left. 
So I'm getting down to the dregs of the ball, which is awesome. Um, knee high socks out of 100 grams. I can do it. I have small feet. I wear a size US five and a half shoe and um, I have skinny legs. So <laughs> I can easily get um, knee high socks out of 100 grams. I will most likely have some leftover too. In the in my past experience, I've knit, like I said, two pairs of knee high socks before this one. Both of those pairs I had, I wanna say like 10 to 20 grams of yarn left over. Um, I'm hoping, I think I tried to do these ones a little teeny bit longer even, so that I can kind of scrunch them down to use up even more of the yarn. Uh, I don't know how your particular mileage is going to vary with knee-high socks. I've heard a lot of people say that they need more than 100 grams for knee-high socks, um, and that's because they probably have more of a standard foot size than I do. I have really small feet. So I am lucky enough to be able to get knee-high socks out of one 100 gram skinny yarn, um, but I don't know if you would be able to. Uh, I feel like you probably could, even if you standardly do like a 64 stitch count sock and you had to go up to like 72 for the top ribbing. Um, I would imagine that you could probably squeak by with 100 grams if you did contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. That's my guess. That was originally kind of my idea when I first tried doing knee high socks is that I was gonna do a really long contrasting toe. Um, but I ended up not having to do that, and that was super cool, and I feel really lucky that I can do it all in a single color, because I really like socks that are just one single color. I think contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes are really cool, but um, I am just partial to the one color sock. Um, but I think, I feel my gut says that many people could get away with 100 grams with contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. I'm not sure, though. Try it. I highly recommend trying it. There are a lot of patterns on Ravelry for knee high socks that would probably give a better gauge of that because they've been tested. Um, I don't use a pattern. I just kind of wing it and I found a formula that works for me and that's what I do. So I suggest giving it a try. Um, it might take some ex experimentation. It might take um, finding a pattern on Ravelry. But um, this is how I do it and it works super so these are really fun to be knitting on. Um, I use a size one needle for all of my socks. This is my Chiaogu Mini Twist Interchangeable, which is my absolute favorite sock needle. And uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with these because they're awesome. Here is the Nomadic Yarns tag. And this is the Dobbies of Free Elf in the Twisty Sock Base. I love them. I can't wait to wear them. And that is that. I have also been working on my Summertide shawl, which is a shawl design by Helen Stewart, who is Curious Handmade. This was one of her mystery knit-alongs um, from a past year. She is having a mystery knit-along currently, which I am like dying over because I love um, the Yarn that was specifically dyed for the pattern release is Woolen Vine, and it's a kit of three different colorways, and it's so freaking pretty. I love it so much. I um, have been watching Kristen of Woolen Vine Yarns make hers, and oh, it's just so pretty, and it's so tempting, and I, I can't do mystery knit alongs, though. I just can't. I just like can't make myself do it. But as it's coming out and as I see more and more of it, uh, I wish I would have. It sounds fun to do a mystery knit along. But I don't do them. I've done them in the past with not, I've never done a Helen Stewart one. Um, I did one by Laura Nelkin once. And uh, I ended up not liking it. So I stopped working on it. And I still haven't used the yarn that I bought for it. So that kind of like turned me off to the whole mystery knit along process because I'm just, I'm not that adventurous, you guys, I'm just not. But of course, then ones come out that I see and I love and I'm like, oh, I should have done it. I'll do it later, just like this one. Anyway, <laughs> so the Summertide Shawl is a fantastic pattern and I am 
Loving it so far. I'm almost done with it. So here's what I have. This is a crescent shaped shawl and it's got this garter section which was super fun to knit. It's got this lace section. It's got a different lace section down here and right now I am on the very last lace section which is the final clue which I think is clue four. Is it clue four? I don't know. It's the last clue. So I'm almost done with this thing. The yarns that I am using for this shawl are Wool and Vine Yarns in the Nouveau base, which is the 100% single ply superwash merino base. This is the paranormal colorway. And my second color is Yarn Experiments in the, it, this one is a single ply as well, but it's a superwash merino and Stellina base. So it's the same sort of base, but sparkly. And this is the Night Dame colorway. And I think they look really good together. So I am knitting this on a size six needle. These are my, what do you call them? Signature needles. And let's see, is this the front? This is the front. I think they look really great together, these two colorways. I love them. And I am excited to be on the last clue. The lace has been really, really fun. I um, did switch up my stitch markers. If you can see my stitch markers on here, I've got all of these um, just plain copper jump ring stitch markers. And they're kind of my favorites. Before I had, a whole cacophony of different types of stitch markers on here because I was using so many stitch markers for the lace repeats that I kind of went through my entire stitch marker stash and I ended up having to break into these like really icky plastic spiral what do you call them like it's like that keychain spiral um, plastic stitch markers that I really despise using I just kind of have them as they're like the first stitch markers I ever got and I have them as like emergency backup stitch markers. And so I was using a bunch of those and I despised them. So uh, I did end up placing an order through Nitpicks, which I'll talk a little bit about later. And uh, they sold these really super plain stitch markers for like a dollar and a half. And you got like a hundred of them. So that's what I have on here now and I'm much happier with them. So I am so in love with this shawl. I think it looks really great. I can't wait to wear it. I love a good single ply merino fingering weight base, especially for shawls. I just adore it and I cannot wait to wear this thing. And I really, really love these two yarns together. I just think they look so good. And the lace on this thing is really gorgeous. I'm really happy with it. I was kind of out of a lace thing for a while and it was really, really nice to come back to it like in this like full force kind of way. This is like just lace on lace on lace and um, that's been really really fun so here are the tags for the yarns I'm using that's my Volan Vine Nouveau Paranormal and then here is the yarn experiments I will link to both of these shops in the show notes and this is living in my Neon Cats project bag the little sheep. It's my little sheep. And I'm going to show you my progress keeper like I do every time because it's adorable. It's a kawaii moon. Sorry for the shaking. Be still, moon. Whatever. That's what she looks like. That's from a shop called Charmed and Dangerous, also on Etsy. I love her, um, what do you call them? Clay? Is it clay? resin clay something polymer clay stitch markers i really really like her stuff a lot so <sighs> that has been super fun to work on i love my shawl it has been a while since i've knit a shawl and um, i'm hoping this gets me back on the shawl train because i always like having a shawl on the needles i just haven't had a lot of them on the needles lately mm -hmm. but 
On to, what is next? What are you? Oh yeah, I have a new cast on. Um, so I have been wanting to knit a hat, uh, again for my baby. Uh, I think haps are amazing pieces of functional garment accessory things. I love them, I've never, no that's not true, I kind of made one. I don't know why I say things sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, I have always wanted to make this particular hat pattern and um, I've decided to make it as a baby blanket and it's the Hansel Hap by Gudrun Johnston and I am so into it, I love it. So, this is what I have so far. <laughs> so, um, the yarn that I'm using for this thing is uh, for the main color, the center square and the border, I'm using Moonstone Dye Works in the Natural Merino base. And this is just undyed, straight from the mill yarn. Um, this is my Natural Merino base without anything done to it. And uh, it's gorgeous. I really, really am in love with this base. Um, so it's a non-superwash, 100% Falkland Merino. It is organic and it's lovely. It's super, super soft. I love it so much. And for the contrast, okay, so the Hansel Hap, what you're supposed to do according to the pattern is use, first of all, um, it's designed for rustic non-superwash yarns. And um, the main color for the center square and the border is your main color. And then you're supposed to have a bunch of different contrast colors for the edging and you're supposed to switch up colors. I was so tempted to order some Jameson or Jameson and Smith yarn from the internets and uh, use that to make this hat because I feel like that would be so cool. That's kind of the yarn that it was intended for and um, I really wanted to, but then I decided I should really knit from Stash because I have this gorgeous yarn that I've always wanted to use and I've never figured out what to do with it and I thought it would be perfect. This is a really bad way to show it. I have a second skein, it comes caked. So I'm gonna show you the second one instead because I haven't messed it up the way I did the first skein. Um, so this is what I'm using for the border and all the contrast colors. And this is Nunaba yarn and it's a really 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 gorgeous yarn um i believe it's out of australia and it's white gum wool and it's really soft it's really really pretty and pretty much i don't know much about white gum wool i feel like it's a specific type of wool it might be a breed but i'm not positive um, but it's 100% uh, wool, non-superwash. It's super luxurious feeling and super, super soft. It, it feels really similar to my non-superwash merino base. And so I think they're going to go really, really well together. The construction is really similar. The feel is really similar. And um, this is a gradient. And the colorway for this, I believe it's St. Gillian. Um, but the colorway name is handwritten, so I might be reading it wrong, but I think that's the St. Gillian. And, oh, it's so pretty. It's a fingering weight, 100 gram, four ply. I love it. So I have two skeins of this. It came in cakes. And uh, I originally purchased this yarn when the, oh shoot, what's it called? when this shawl was released, an Amber O'Brien shawl, and uh, that shawl calls for two gradients knit opposite, kind of, and it has this really cool double gradient effect, uh, and I wanted to knit that shawl so bad when it came out, and so I bought this yarn for it, and then after I bought the yarn, I realized that you were supposed to get two gradients of different colorways. And I got two gradients of the same colorway. And I started to knit it anyway, and it just like was not making, it just didn't make sense to use two gradients of the same colorway because you could, I was just like, forget it. So I have these two gradients that I've never really known what to do with. 
and so I'm making the Hansel hap with it. Um, now, if you add up all the yardage called for in the Hansel hap pattern for the contrasting colors, it amounts to a tiny bit more than what I have here. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is just start using this until I run out, and if I run out, I'm gonna pull off of this one a little bit of the last color that I used from this, which I think is gonna be the pink. So I think it's gonna look really good. It's gonna go from the white main color into the brown and then into the gray and then the pink and that's how the progression of colors is going to go. So I'm really excited about this. I've always wanted to make the Hansel Hap and um, I actually have this pattern in my library because a long time ago on the um, Knit Girls podcast uh, they made a call for like suggestions for um, thread topics for giveaway questions. So like for prompts for their giveaways. Um, so I submitted an idea for a question to them years ago and they picked one of my questions and used it. And so as a thank you, uh, they gifted me the Hansel hat pattern, which was in my queue. So it's got that really awesome memory. I, I remember I was just so cool to like get that from the Nick girls. Cause I love the Nick girls. <laughs> and um, so anyway, it's, I really like that I have the pattern because of that and I've always wanted to knit it. And I'm really excited to be knitting it right now. So I can't wait to use this yarn either. It's been in my stash for so long. And it's such beautiful, beautiful yarn. I'm really happy to be using it. And I am really happy that for this pattern, I am kind of sticking with the non-superwash. I really wanted to. Um, I, I, I feel like this kind of hap is traditionally made with a non-superwash yarn and with something a little more rustic. These yarns are not that rustic. They're really soft, really buttery, but they're still non-superwash. So I'm really happy to kind of be sticking with that whole vibe for my hap. And so I'm knitting this on a size eight, which is what the pattern calls for. It's creating a really loose gauge. It's all garter so far. And this center square is really, really, really easy to make, like super duper easy and it's completely mindless. And you just kind of knit and knit and knit and increase and increase and increase until you get to a certain number of stitches. And then I'll start decreasing and then I'll have square and then I'll do the border. So I'm really excited about this. I cannot wait to get farther along on it. There's an intruder cat in my backyard. If she attacks my chickens, I'm going to be mad. Squirrel, take care of this. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is a really exciting project. Uh, it's got these super cool kind of loop-de-loos at the end. It's going to be along the whole border of the square, and that's going to be really handy for picking up stitches later when I do the border, I think. I'm guessing. Anyway, I'm super enjoying this so far, and uh, it's... <laughs> it's going to be boring white for quite a long time. Uh, it's kind of a kind of the natural base for this yarn is like a more of a cream tone than like a white white. And uh, but it's really fun. It's super mindless. Like I said, it's just back and forth knitting and it's garter and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And that is living in my Gasly's project bag that I made for myself. It's got a little unicorn on it. And I really like this bag. Um, here is the tag for the new Naba yarn. And it's really, really, really pretty yarn. I can't wait to get into that part of it. So that's exciting. My last project is another new cast on. Um, and this is living in a very, very, very special special project bag, which is from Lost and Fond. I love it so much. I just got this in the mail yesterday and I transferred this project into this bag because I needed to use it right away. And that's what it looks like. Isn't it cool? It's like fairy girls in masks and like fairy crowns. And the fabric on the bottom is sparkly. 
right? So Lindsay, who is a good friend of mine, uh, she is also known as Lost and Fond, and she has the Lost and Fond Etsy shop. Sorry I'm distracted because this neighbor cat is in my backyard just like rolling around being adorable. Yeah, stop looking out the window. She so, so kindly sent me a little care package in the mail, which included one of her project bags and some other awesome things including a naki hat that she made which is the same hat that i made for my baby and she knitted out in moonstone dioricks and it was so cool and so funny and now my kid's gonna have two of these hats and i i'm so excited anyway she sent me this super kind package and i now have one of her project bags i've always wanted one of her project bags and um now i have one and i'm so excited so thank you so much Lindsay. i love love this bag so much and let me show you the inside fabric too because it's gorgeous so living in this project bag is my next brand new cast on which is a sweater and i know i've been talking about how i am and i'm like oh i can't have more than one sweater on the needles at the same time but I, I i'm a liar apparently because i have a new sweater on the needles <laughs> This is a sweater um, by Hohi Locatelli. It is called Quiet Stars, and it is from the most recent edition of Interpretations, which is Hohi Locatelli's uh, publication with collaboration with Vera Valmaki. Um, and I love the Interpretations collection so much. I, I really, really love them. And uh, I really wanted to make this cardigan, and it went perfectly with the yarn that I just got at Stitches West. And um, so I bought the collection and I cast on this sweater this last week and I'm really, really happy that I did because I'm in love with it. So uh, this is what I have so far. It's the Quiet Stars and it's a super cool cardigan. And that is where I'm at so far. So what you're seeing here is the back neck. So this center seam here sits right in the back of your neck and it's a big collar and you knit out either way, and that'll be the collar. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the construction's gonna go, but so far I'm in the middle of that back collar section. And the yarn that I'm using is the O Wool O Wash Fingering, which is uh, some yarn that I got uh, last month in February at Stitches West from the Starlight Knitting Society booth that was there and I <clears throat> I love this yarn so much. It's really nice. It's really squishy. It is a um, Fingering weight yarn It is Washable it's certified organic merino But it's not done in that traditional superwash process it's done in a more, it's done in a different, I don't know exactly how it is made to be washable, but it's done in a different process than the standard process, which is more environmentally friendly. So that's cool. I've always wanted to try this yarn and it feels fantastic. It, it, it feels really nice and wooly and I love it. Um, this is the Pearly Muscle colorway, which is kind of my favorite grayish purple sort of tone. I love it. Um, my only thing with this yarn, and it's so many yarns are like this, and I am just such a huge wimp, but it does, as you're knitting with it, have flyaways. And those flyaways are the things that I can see them in front of me now. They get in my eyes, and if there's like one thing that annoys me most in the entire world, it's having things get stuck in my eyes. So <laughs> that is the only thing that's a little like eh about this yarn, but I, I, that is not a flaw. I do not hold that against this yarn at all in any way. That's my own wimpiness showing through. But it's really gorgeous. Uh, it's a really nice kind of loosely plied. I believe it's a two ply. Yeah, it's two ply. And uh, I did make a swatch, which is this little guy right here. Um, I kind of mostly got gauge. <laughs> uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me. My gauge is a teeny bit smaller than what the pattern calls for, which means my fabric is, the whole garment's gonna be a tiny bit smaller than what it's written for. And I've just 
decided, as I usually do, because that's usually kind of the case with me, that that is okay. Um, I did not want to go up a needle size because I like how this fabric turned out. My guess is that my yarn is a little bit finer, um, thinner than the yarn called for in the pattern. So I think it's going to be okay. I kind of typically, as of late, do have that experience where my gauge is a little bit smaller than the pattern and what it calls for. And I usually decide that's okay because I'm a really small person and this has a lot of give to it. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be bad. I have three skeins of this yarn. Let me show you one of the other full skeins. So that's what it looks like. It's just so pretty. I love it so much. So I bought three skeins of this and I think that's going to be great yardage for this cardigan and I cannot wait to get more done on it. Um, there's a lot of lace in this cardigan and it is really nice, easy lace. It's like a um, six row repeat, but the only lace rows are two of those rows. So it's super easy to memorize as long as I know what row I'm on. And um, I will mention this, I do keep track of my rows on any knitting project that I have that needs row keeping track of um, through an app on my phone called Knit Tink. And uh, I will link to that in the show notes. It's a really, really great row counting app that I love so much. Um, the last I checked, which was a while ago, it was only available on Android, which is what I have. Um, but they did say they were going to make it available on Apple products soon, which was a long time ago. So I'm not sure if it is available for Apple yet, but like I said, I will link to it in the show notes. It's a really great app. There's a free version, which I used to have, and there's like an upgraded like dollar version, which I have now. And the difference is that with the free app, you're only allowed to have like three projects going at a time. But with the paid for app, you can have as many projects going at a time as you want. And that's what I have. And it's, I love it. I, it's, my by far preferred method of keeping track of what row I'm on. So anyway, <laughs> this is the Quiet Stars cardigan so far. I really am enjoying it. It's another one of those cardigan patterns where the construction, the style, is really similar to this one, which is another hohi pattern. And I really like it. I think it's going to fit really well. It's got those set-in sleeves. It's got the nice open front with the really wide neckband. It has ties that you can oops, <laughs> that you can attach to it. So if you want to close it, you can tie it, which is really cool. Um, you can do the ties or leave them off. I'm probably going to do them, uh, but we'll see. And I am knitting this on a size four. This is from my High High Sharp Interchangeable set, which is my very favorite non-sock knitting needles of all time. And I am really excited about this sweater. Uh, I still am working on my other sweater that I have going, which is my Hematite sweater by Lisa Much. Um, but I was just so tempted by this thing that I was like, I need to do it and I need to do it right now. So I did and I'm happy. So here again is my awesome Lost and Fawn project bag. It's a nice drawstring bag. It's got a lot of sparkle to it, which is awesome. Okay, that's all my knitting. No spinning, no sewing, of course, because why would I have any of those things? I haven't for so long. Um, I, uh, I'll get to it someday. We'll see, probably. Um, okay, shop update stuff. There is a kind of what I'm calling uh, an orphans and experiments sale happening this week. Uh, in the Moonstone Diaryx Etsy shop, Moonstone Diaryx is my hand-dyed yarn company, and um, I did not have any time to dye anything these past couple of weeks because I went out of town last weekend, and um, that's when I do my dyings on the weekends. So what I've decided to do um, is kind of take all of my skeins of yarn that I have that were not initially going into the shop for sale, either due to the fact that they were on experimental bases that I ended up not carrying, 
or they were early experimental colorways that I ended up not going with and I just never put in the shop. Um, there are a couple skeins in there of like current bases and current colorways where there is something um, not right with the skein. Um, I think the only ones like that that I have is where there was a knot in the skein or a break in the skein where I had to create a knot. Um, so there's a couple of those going up. And the thing about this update is all of this stuff is going to be really hugely discounted. What I'm going to do is just put everything up in case you like it, you can buy it, and it's all going to be $10. So that's way that's less than half of what my skeins generally go for in the shop um, and I kind of these skeins of yarn is just, have just been sitting around for a while and they're they're really great and I think people might want them but they're just not things that I could offer regularly so I never put them up in the shop and I just figured why not get them out there since I didn't have any new things to offer in the shop this week uh, I thought I'd put them up put them at a discount and see if anybody wanted them so I have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be putting up in the shop. Um, I got together a few things just to kind of show you, give you an idea of what's going to be there. Um, and what I plan on doing is just having these things up in the shop for like a week and that's it. So they're going to go up tomorrow morning, which is Saturday. I didn't check the date, but I'll put it here. <laughs> um, so they're going to go up in the shop tomorrow morning, Saturday, probably at nine o'clock. And um, they're just going to stay there for a week at the discounted price of $10. And then after that, I'm going to take them back out and kind of put them back into storage where they were before. Um, there is still some regular yarn from um, in the shop right now. So that'll still be there if you want it. Um, they'll just also be this kind of sale yarn from my, what did I call it? My Orphans and Experiments sale. <laughs> so let me show you um, what I pulled out to show you. Okay, so I've got a few things here. I don't think any of these have colorway names. I may kind of assign them colorway names when I put them up in the shop, but we'll see. Um, so I have got this first off. Um, I do have two skeins of this, and this was um, a base that I ended up not going with, which is 100% um, Falkland Merino non-superwash DK yarn. And it is a really, really gorgeous base. Um, and this is kind of a sage green colorway that I just was testing on it. So I'll have a couple of those. Um, I think the rest are fingering weight. This is a super minty skein with some blue speckles. Um, this one is a super chartreuse skein with some gray speckles. Here's a brown. I don't carry many browns in my shop, but I was experimenting with browns and oranges a while ago. And this is what I came up with that never made it into the shop. Um, this is a BFL, by the way. I am gonna have all these labeled by content and colorway and stuff. So this is a BFL fingering. Um, here's another experimental colorway. It was, this was a really, really early one that I really like, but I did not write down the formula to, so I was never able to recreate it. And it's also on a base that I never ended up carrying. Um, here's another one. Kind of the same story with this one. And here are a couple on a base that I this is a base that I don't carry, also colorways that I don't carry, um, but I do really like these colorways. And uh, this base is a, it's another 100% superwash merino single ply, but it's more loosely spun than the one I currently carry. Um, so this is slightly different than just my regular merino singles base. Um, this base, I wish I carried, but I don't. <laughs> Um, so this is actually my Haunted colorway, which was a Halloween colorway from last year. And this is dyed on a base that I was trying out, which is non-superwash merino and silk. And I really, really love this base. And I've tried to carry it in my shop a couple of times. I've only ever gotten a couple sample skeins to try dyeing on. 
Um, but the producer, which is the same producer that makes my non-superwash Falkland Merino, is constantly out of the space. Um, I, they're, they're a pretty small time producer and I think especially this one they make really small batches of. So every time I try to buy it, they're always out. So I've never been able to get it, but it's a really gorgeous space and I am in love with it. And um, I'm gonna have a couple skeins on the space that I'm gonna sell. <laughs> so I highly recommend getting your hands on this one. I love the space so much and I am hopefully one day gonna carry it at least for a limited run. Um, and then here is, this was an experimental colorway that never made it into the shop, but this is just on my regular um, natural merino base, the non-superwash merino, Falkland Merino organic fingering. So that's kind of a sample of some of the stuff that's gonna be going up into the shop tomorrow, Saturday, and um, all of those skeins and more will be just $10. So if you want to check it out, please do so. And like I said, there are also just going to be some other regular shop skeins in the shop for regular price, but you'll see a bunch of this stuff. It'll be clearly labeled just as $10. So check it out if you want to, and I hope to see you there. Um, moving on from shop update, I will talk a little bit about favorites because as I mentioned earlier in the episode, I did place a Knit Picks order. And that is because I um, told you a little while ago that I got kind of obsessed with Stephen West garments and I wanted to knit them all, so I decided I should probably just go ahead and buy the book. So I did. <laughs> um, so I got the West Knits, Best Knits, Number two, which is the sweater edition, and um, this has a bunch of Stephen West sweater patterns in it, and it was a much better value than buying them individually on Ravelry, and I decided to get the print copy rather than just the digital one uh, because it was the same price to get the print copy, and it came with the digital download for the whole collection too, so I was like, why the heck not? Um, so I got it, and there's Hello Kitty on the back. Uh -huh. And while I was at it, I figured why not just buy the shawl one too. <laughs> so I did. Um, so those are my two new acquisitions, are the two West Knits, West Knits Best Knits books. And I don't often buy actual print publications because I am a recovering book addict. <laughs> and... Um, as a recovering addict, I need to limit my physical book purchases or else it just gets out of control in my life. I have I have dwindled down my physical book collection significantly since uh, my olden days of having way too many books. And I know, you know, having too many books is not a bad thing. But it can be when you have a small limited space or when you're moving. I have moved quite often, not often, I've moved every few years before I bought my house. And uh, consistently, the hardest thing of mine to pack and move has been my books. It's been like the one thing that's like most of my boxes are books. And it's because I love books, I love reading, and um, I love having a library of books that I love, and it was it 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 over the years got just like crazy out of hand, like crazy out of hand. So I have, like I said, dwindled down my book collection to only the essentials. And so with craft books, especially, I do not let myself really buy physical copies as much as I can stop myself, and I really do like PDF collections, so generally I stick to those, but I figured these were worth it. These are essentials, right? I, I can call these essentials, I feel like. So these just have a lot of his patterns in them as a collection, rather than buying them all individually. So I am pretty happy with that purchase. I, uh, I also picked up those stitch markers that I showed earlier because they were a steel, and I'm excited to be knitting some more Stephen West things. I talked about how I wanted to knit one of his sweaters next. That is still hopefully going to be coming up soon. 
especially now that I have a book of a whole bunch of his sweater patterns. Um, and I'm thinking probably my next shawl cast on two might be a Stephen West one. We'll, we'll see. Um, yes, very much so a favorite of mine right now. Books and Stephen West. Um, that is it for this episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I, um, I have, I don't know. I have nothing else to say. I'm back to being bad at ending podcasts because I ran out of things to say and now I'm like, um, okay, bye. <laughs> but, um, I will say goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and, um, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, leave a comment if you want to chit chat. I love, love hearing from you guys so much. And um, if you have any questions about where to find anything that I talked about today, go check out the show notes in the Ravelry group. If I don't mention something there, which totally happens, just message me or leave a comment and ask and I will be happy to let you know and probably add it to the show notes. Um, so I hope you guys are having a really wonderful and crafty and fantastic beginning to your spring. Um, I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. I hope to see you tomorrow at the Moonstone Dye Workshop update. I hope to see you at the, uh, Kid Along, Knit Along, uh, on Ravelry and on Instagram. Um, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, I would love that. Um, I am Dynamite Trujillo on Instagram and uh, say hi to me there and I would love to uh, say hi back. Okay, I'm really going to go now because I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye guys.